Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crashy, and today we're going to be diving into the ultimate guide for Shinbi. Mostly going to be focusing on jungle, but we're going to talk a little bit about laning with her as well. I'm loving this hero. I think she's absolutely phenomenal. Let's go ahead and dive into the kit, and then we're going to hit that practice mode to talk about some build options and how you actually play her. So her passive is Biting Melody. Basic attacks deal an additional 10 plus 12% uh, magic scaling magic damage on hit periodically biting melody um, deals four times damage damaging an enemy hero with an ability decreases the cooldown by one second so her autos they slap they actually do damage basic attacks her melee attack a rushing beat is her alternate ability which is her right mouse button a dash forward a fixed distance dealing flat damage 40 60 80 100 120 with plus 40 percent magic scaling magic damage to all enemies shinbi passes through so dashing through enemies actually does that damage rushing beat can be re-triggered within three seconds casting of casting to dash a second time at no count at no cost the cooldown of her dash goes from with scaling is 18 17 16 15 14 with a cost of 80 and then we have line tempo that's going to be her q ability her poke ability primary ability uh summon a spirit wolf that runs in a straight line uh and passes through all enemy targets dealings flat damage 65 95 125 155 185 plus 60 percent magic scaling magic damage cooldown ranges from 6 5.55 4.54 with a flat cost of 30. this is her e ability circle rhythm secondary ability summon four spirit wolves that circle should be for three seconds granting 40 60 80 100 120 flat plus 35 magic scaling um, shield for the duration and after the wolves expire so the wolves deal flat damage 12 19 26 30 33 sorry 40 and plus 12 percent magic damage per second to nearby enemies cooldown ranges from 15 seconds 13.5 12 10.5 down to nine and the cost actually increases from 60 to 65 70 75 to 80 and then her ultimate ability is all kill ultimate a passive dealing damage to enemy heroes with abilities applies track for eight seconds stacking up to eight times so this is what you actually want to stack up before you use the ultimate active summon a pack of spirit wolves to attack the target with the most track stacks dealing 50 80 120 plus 18 percent magic scaling magic damage per, per spirit wolf on a cooldown of 120 180 and a cost of 100 so she's magic damage she's melee she's a bit of an assassin and she can honestly play like mid off lane and jungle i personally think that she's going to be best in jungle and off lane uh, but i don't think that she's going to be a bad mid as well if you know you want to play her there so let's go ahead and dive into the practice range practice area and we're going to talk a little bit about build options crest options and uh yeah let's give it a go all right here we are at the very start of the game or the start of a practice game and we have a choice to make about the crest we have the occult crest and we have the magician crest now i'm still figuring this out for the role i'm going to tell you right now i love tempest specifically with the occult crest for jungling tempest is 15 magic power 150 health 8 magic pen 15 ability haste this is your sustain right this is like kind of what's going to play into the way that i like to play her with jungle i think if you want a burstier option obelisk is great on the occult crest as well wouldn't really pick typhoon on her so these are definitely options and i haven't messed around with magician's crest on her much especially for laning i don't imagine that epoch would be very good or epic i don't know how you say this um but i do think that soul bearer or in time flux band could be pretty good a uh, soul bear if you're going to run something like an azure core which we'll talk about uh, in a little bit this is going to give you a you know bigger shield is going to give you magic life steal could be a really really good option for her and time flex band would give her an interaction kind of like countess where you could pop your time flex band dash in do some damage and then pour it out and then have your cooldowns again so i actually think that she's got some really really good crest options depending on the way you want to build her the way that you want to play her and where you're positioned again for the sake of this one i'm going to focus on tempest i'm not even going to get it because we're in the practice range um, but i'm going to talk about why i would pick tempest so overcharge for eight seconds causing lightning to zap up to three nearby enemy heroes each second dealing bonus magical damage based on your magic power and healing you equal to the damage dealt multiple strikes against the same target deal 50 percent reduced damage so this is like the tankier bruisery ap option right you get power you get pen you get haste you get health this plays in perfectly with what we're going to be looking for as a build option so just keep that in mind as we go forward again those other three options honestly great on her so let's go ahead and pick up some gold and we are going to start looking at items actually you know what before we look at items let me show y'all a little something let's run forward a little bit and I want to talk about her jungle clear quickly because uh, I want to make sure that I don't leave this off if um, 
if you know you are trying to, to take her into jungle if you haven't watched one of my jungle videos definitely check out the channel make sure you're subscribed and you like the video as well but her jungle clear you want to start with the q the q has a lower cooldown six second cooldown and it honestly does great damage so this is basically how you would start in jungle now you can start blue side that's probably your best option uh, but if you wanted to start red side that's fine too and you just want to kite your camp get it low and then use your q on cooldown so this is going to be probably the fastest clear Going ahead and smite that down with the hunt, and then boom, and then you can move into your E or move into your right click, depending on how you want to play the game. So, this is your simple jungle clear. I don't even have a codex on me or anything, so honestly it would have been faster because I should have picked up the codex. But just wanted to touch on the fact that you're level 1 if you're jungling, you probably start Q. Honestly, level 1 if you're laning, you probably start Q. So um, so you can farm. So leveling Q, very, very good. We'll talk about her um, level priority here in a bit. So we have some gold, and you want to start the game with a Megacosm from the jungle. Now, I've been talking to Sanji a little bit, my teammate from Team TOS, and I do think that Azure Core is very strong on her, especially like we talked about a little bit ago for Soul Bear potentially in lane azure core is going to be a really really strong item to build um, through the alchemical rod because this gives you so much mana and power in jungle i'm not building this item it's going to take a little bit too long to stack up it's not going to get me to a really really important item for me in jungle which is the megacosm so again keep in mind that i do think that azure core is a phenomenal first item buy on her if you are choosing to lane her but since i'm slightly leaning toward the jungle we're going to talk about megacosm so what is megacosm why do we want it so badly megacosm 70 magic power 200 mana 20 ability haste dealing damage to an enemy target with an ability deals five percent of their maximum health as magic damage over three seconds additional applications within the duration deal 50 percent of the damage instantly and refresh the duration this shreds this shreds your jungle it shreds objectives it shreds fang tooth it shreds players tanks specifically this is your mutilator of the jungle for Jinbi. you really need this item it is your first rush now here's the thing it's a little awkward because if you don't stay on field to pick up your dust stab then you're only going to go back and get like a spirit bead if you don't stay on field to get up to 1200 for potent staff it's going to get a little awkward i actually view shinbi as a farming jungler you really just want to like rip through your jungle and try to push yourself to some of this big spikes because this is actually a pretty expensive item in terms of the way that it's actually built out because it only has one path that has like three components and then the other path that has the one mid-tier component so so it can get a little awkward if you do take too much damage if you're forced to back uh, but it is really really important that you pick up this item right outside of this item the way that we're building her is almost like ap bruiser i go straight into world breaker now world breaker is 40 magic power 30 tenacity 300 health and the reason why this item is so good is because the killer of shinbi is crowd control she's a mage she doesn't get a cleanse you have no cleanse 30% tenacity is going to help with that, building stacking health on her, both with uh, World Breaker, future items that we're going to pick up, and the Tempest for sustain with additional health is huge for her. Now we have the Fiend passive dealing magic damage to an enemy hero, increases your magic damage uh, dealt by 4% for 5 seconds, stacking up to 4 times, and then you have Maya, gain magic power equal to 2% of your maximum health. So gaining health, building health on her is going to play through the World Breaker great, which is why you want to get this early, because as you pick this item up, it's going to give you additional power, and then as you you pick up future items it's also going to give you additional power um now we're going to move into life binder life binder is 60 magic power 10 magical life steal 200 health 10 ability haste this gives you vital bond gain 0.5 percent bonus health ability haste per magic per 50 magic power so you're getting additional ability haste which is another theme that we're kind of going for in this build getting lots of ability haste in this build and then you have Mag magi maggie <laughs> achieving a takedown grants 50 magic power for eight seconds so this is your sustain item this is your bruisery kind of sustain item um, that you're looking for you get life magical life steal you're getting additional haste haste to keep moving around keep using your abilities with magical life steal you're getting power and you're getting health so all of these items are building the foundation for what you want to build and, and what you want to have so you have your shred your big damage you have your setup bruisery tenacity health that builds into power you have your life binder that is power sustain and additional power with health from um, the interaction with world breaker from here this is where I literally have been trying to say this a bit, like in streams and things, you could take a bunch of different items, throw your, like close your eyes, put them on a dart board and throw a dart at them and you're gonna land on a good item. If you need to go tanky, you can go tanky. It's probably my least favorite preference. Like I don't, you could build into like an unbroken will, into a raiment, uh, into some armor. You can absolutely do that. 
if you need to build Tain Scepter, I think this item is pretty good. You're going to be anti-healing people, building additional health. That plays into World Breaker. Building a ton of ability haste, 20 ability haste on Tainted Scepter, 70 magic power. Really, really good option. If you want to go into the second binder, really great option. 80 magic power, more health, which plays into the World Breaker. 15% tenacity, more tenacity. And then damage ability slow. So this gives you some staying power where you can actually stick on a target and actually chase them uh, continuously. Now, one thing I will say, with this build, I don't actually like a Living Crown. You're not really building as as much magic damage as if you were doing full like assassin kind of a build um so i'm not a huge fan of oblivion crown um i don't think it's a terrible option but i'm kind of steering away from it but there are so many different magic um options that you can go for if you really want um additional power and pen i look for wraith leggings this is going to give you good movement speed good magic power good penetration and I'm trying to think of what other options that I just think are, are really, really good for her. I, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Prophecy. I'm not a huge fan of Time Warp. I, I've been given some recommendations and I've, I've messed around with them. Um, I think Combustion could be okay, but not the pen option that I'm looking for. And then honestly, yeah, I think Binder is pretty solid. Wraith Leggings, pretty solid. And if you needed to, you can absolutely go a little bit um, more healthy. So if you needed to get some armor, you could do that. You could build something like a Flux Matrix. This is going to give you magic armor, health, ability haste, and then nearby enemy heroes take 15% additional magic damage. So this is kind of like building into damage. Um, by building tanky so that's definitely an option um, just make sure you're not picking up anything that has any like ad on it or, like physical power like you wouldn't want a citadel or anything like that uh, but if you needed to you absolutely could uh, build some of these counter um like like tankier options something like a raymond if you wanted to be a little bit more uh, tanky and have health regen so um not gonna lock in those last two slots really i do think that something um like my kind of go-to build right now is like Binder and Caustica or, or Wraith Legging, sorry. Uh, but I think that Tainted Scepter is a pretty big option for me as well. So let's head to the lane and let's go ahead and max our levels up. Now in jungle, I recommend maxing up your E. I think in lane, there's definitely a case to be said about um, maxing up your Q. Um, I definitely am maxing the right click dash last and um, obviously the ultimate whenever you can. So. How do you want to play this hero? Pretty simply, honestly. Let's take a look at how her right click works. When you use it, you can see the, the indicator on the screen. That's your window to use it again. Very, very simple. So with her Q, you have your Q poke. You have your E that you want to turn on, but you need to get in close because it, it, it's the wolves around you. So if you see a target, you pretty much want to go in, turn your E. You can use your Q in the middle of the fight as they're moving, as they're running away. And then you just kind of stay in. And now keep in mind, the spotlight is who has the most stacks and who's the target of your ultimate. So as you have the eight, number eight on your wolves, if you look at the UI right now, you can see my wolves has the eight, my R ability. When you press that, it's gonna lock onto them and send it their way. So should be really honestly a pretty simple kit. You have either an initiation poke tool or you dash in, get into the fight, rechase, and then poke. And then as your abilities are coming back up, because you do have so much uh, ability haste, you're just looking to kind of stay in and keep doing what you're doing. I actually think she has a pretty simple kit. It's really not that crazy, um, but just make sure that you know that you are, you know, trying to get to the target and trying to, uh, you know, turn on your E ability, hit as many people as possible, things of that nature. Uh, the only last tip that I'll probably give is like, think about the Fang Tooth Pit. If you're on that the staircase, you can actually use your right click, your dashes in the air. So you don't have to always go like go around. You can actually dash and dash over. So keep that in mind that you can dash in the air to give yourself, um, you know, the ability to initiate if you need to do something like that. Um, but yeah. That's my thoughts on Shinbi and the way that I'm looking to play her. Keep in mind with Tempest, because I don't have my Tempest because I would have to sit here and grind for it. Uh, when you dash into a fight, if it's a committed fight, literally dash in, turn on your E, pop your Tempest, dash in, turn on your E, pop your Tempest, use your dash again, use your Q, find your target with your ultimate, and stick in there and fight. This character is very strong. I like her quite a bit, and hopefully this has been a helpful video for y'all. So let me know your thoughts on potential build options. Like I said, I do think that you can, you can actually go pretty tanky with her. There's so many potential options for items that you can build. I really do think that there's some pretty good options here. So um, I'm leaning mostly toward Dreambinder Scepter towards the end of the build because I do want to make sure that I'm sticking to that 
assassin playstyle where I'm doing damage. Now, I don't want to go too tanky, but it is definitely possible to lean a little bit tanky if you need to. So friends, thank you so much for watching this video. I definitely do appreciate it. If you would drop a like on it, subscribe to the channel for future predecessor content if you haven't already. Be sure to be kind of one another. Tell someone you love them, and I'll see you on the next video.